Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education meeting. Uh, has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Will you please call the roll? Here. Here. Eliza. Here. Evan. Here. Turner. Here. Herzog. Here. Hempstead. Here. Special. Here. Okay. We will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Shapiro STEM Academy students. So if you could just come up here, if you can sneak around those chairs. <laughs> Okay, so we'll do these two then? Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, whenever you guys are ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is the Art Recognition Award. Yes. You're gonna I'm going to read names. Read names I've, got the, I've got the toughest job here. <laughs> 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 and my apologies in advance, um, um, but I, I do have many of the names phonetically spelled out. So uh, if I do well in pho phonics, I'll be doing well here. And then so do you want, where should we have them come up? Yeah. Do you, maybe what's the you, easiest? Maybe if you step maybe in the middle. Step right in the middle. Okay. And I have certificates, so if you can just come up and get a certificate, that'd be great. Yeah. And the certificate has your own work of art just as it's flashed on the screen. So, we'll start off with uh, Quinn Backer uh, Quinn's. Jacqueline uh, Kozabuski. Just one moment, this is the high school, and I think we need the elementary, and so. Um, we have them all listed. Is it? It's, <laughs> it's it all. Is it high school and elementary today? It looks like middle and elementary. Yeah, we, I, I have them listed from one through 48. Okay, okay. we'll keep going. Okay. Well, wait, if they're coming from high school tonight. Oh, it's West Side School, thank you for the clarification. Okay. Okay, okay. all right. We're going to be okay? It's a little different from past. So that's yes, it is. West High School okay. is on the list. Sorry. Okay. Lindsay Gerke. Peyton Willis. Stephanie Pitts. Victoria O'Leary. Natalia. A Picknor? We're, we're not doing well today here. Abby Hammonds. Meg Grawl. Kendall Bowers. Lily Mott. <coughs> Julian Dito. All right, we got one. Erica Kedrozinski, Rachel Weikert, Spencer Armley, Ben Grill. Katie Block. Brooklyn Graff. Romy Herrenberg. Oh, no. 
Philippe is coming out. He is right up right now. Did you have one for? Can you go back a slide? Yeah, you guys didn't have it either. Okay. You're here. You're here. <laughs> We're missing it though. We could have used a big printed. And for and, this and I know your so. grandfather. So. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> Philippe, Bonnie. Lara Fennell. Jake Christofferson. Jamison Berg. Jared Jones. Isabella Salas. Oh, there's Romy. Can we see her? Yeah. Now I don't have to track around your grandson. <laughs> Isabel Salas? No? Okay. Naomi Gonzalez. Kaylee Gaza. Maddie Merrick. I know I saw it in here. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Lauren Brown. Brown. Maddie, Merrick? Maya. Maya? Maya, 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 Maya. 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 Sam, Maney, Miney. Stuart Day. Claire Tavitad, Tavidel? Okay. Are we? Oh, self portraits. So, does this go to the school? <laughs> so, is this school because there's several students on here? Right. Okay, are any of these students here tonight? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, so can we read through each of those? Yeah, let's read through their names and then somebody can. Okay, them. that would include uh, Claire. Mason Clark, oh, yeah. Kennedy Yacht, oh, Erica no Hong, Why don't you have to come up so James Sainer. If you're yeah. here, yeah. you've come up so we can recognize you. Christine yeah. Noyan. Yeah. Molly O'Connell. And Carol Lowe. In the art world, this is what we call a collaborative piece. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Evans. Yes. So the students who are up here, if you wait, uh, we'll just go to this room next door and we'll get you settled with them. We'll do copies. Right we'll do. That's so you'll get one. The one, one color copier we have at the district. We'll yeah. make sure we get <laughs> All right, copies. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. <laughs> There is copies for everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is everybody. I'm so sorry. 
Is that hers though? Is that that little girl? Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. All right. We'll return to the script. <laughs> I think you're okay. So, Allie Parameter. Yay! Seamus Payne. here tonight that was expecting a certificate or was not named so we make sure we collect that information because it's obvious the um, there was a bit disorder and we apologize for that but um, if you're here this evening and you, sh you were invited to attend um, please let us know and we will work to get you a certificate properly so thank you yeah, thanks everybody Um, you're always welcome to stay, but uh, we understand. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Happy holidays. I would have been happy for you to hear that as well. It's mm -hmm. a really good ad lib thing. So cute. Their art is really good. Yes. We welcome back the rest of the, our normal um, yeah. attendees. And, uh. Okay. Um, so as people are still kind of moving around, I think we can go ahead and start in with the board and administrative reports. Um, board president doesn't have anything to report, so we'll move right into the superintendent's report. Okay. Well, good evening. Um, this is the superintendent's good news report for uh, December 20th, 2017. Uh, first of all, South Park Middle School sends out a big thank you to Shopco for the recent donation of $500 for use with PBIS. South Park appreciates the support of businesses in the community. Webster Stanley Pals, the noon Kiwanis, uh, supports the uh, K Kids uh, Club, a, uh, a community organization which meets monthly uh, to work on projects such as making fleece tie blankets. Um, for the Christine Ann Center and birthday kits for Oshkosh Food Pantry and uh, Webster K Kids officers are inducted in the inducted into the ceremony on November 21st. Uh, nice gathering of uh, students uh, doing for others. 
uh, Jefferson Elementary students uh, received Patriot Stars uh, for following the Jefferson Way on the Respect, Responsible, and Safe. Uh, those stars can be used to purchase staff experiences such as spa time with uh, Principal Buchanan, uh, where a manicurist from a local school of cosmetology has volunteered their time to come to school and give manicures and hand massages or yoga with Ms. Mrs. Ms. Remlow, where students can experience calming yoga uh, using mats and supplies that were purchased as part of, of a giant uh, uh, project experience. Franklin Elementary uh, uh, School students held a, um, held a fine dining experience for its students on November 16th. Uh, students enjoyed a variety of items which included uh, turkey, mashed potatoes, green beans, and stuffing all prepared by the OASD uh, Food Service Staff Department. Uh, students also enjoyed music provided by Perry Tipler's orchestra while they dined. Thanks to all who made this experience a great one, either by volunteering or donating. Franklin K-2 students performed their holiday concert at Alberta Kimball on November 21st, uh, where, the, where the theme was, We Are Thankful for Holiday. They sang songs to celebrate Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. Kindergarten students from Ms. Thomas' uh, class learned about community helpers, goods, and services through reading nonfiction books and holding class discussions. Students then created posters to show that their community helper um, what they'd like to do when they grew up. Uh, they presented other classes wearing attire that, um, for that position and to help students learn about community helpers as well. After third, uh, third grade Franklin students um, uh, spent time in classrooms learning about the Nutcracker story and history, including the music, watching the ballet, and uh, writing about their own Nutcracker stories, students were able to take a trip to the Paint Art Museum uh, to experience the Nutcracker in the castle. They enjoyed the beautifully decorated mansion and experienced more of the story, especially um, after researching it. In recognition of the classroom and music uh, growth mindset, 11 Oshkosh West High School students from the Empower Academy received free tickets and t-shirts at their inaugural Wisconsin Herd game on December 1st. Take a moment to uh, click on um, the um, website when you receive this uh, to also view the West Madrigals singing uh, it, on Good Day Wisconsin that aired on December 5th. Oshkosh West first culinary team uh, of, two, uh, of two competed at the Fox Valley Technical College culinary uh, uh, throwdown on December 1st where they received silver medals and placed in the top of their competition. Uh, their mentor, uh, Mike Berkmas, uh, who uh, owns Beckett's, said that um, Ski, Ski's Meat Market was also instrumental in their success. Both Oshkosh North and um, Oshkosh West High School selected between 50 and 75 leaders from various social networks to participate in a six-hour success of strength training which took place during the uh, last week of November. The Sources of Strength is a suicide prevention program where students, peer leaders, run campaigns to promote hope and resiliency and reduce the, sign, uh, the stigma surrounding mental health. Campaigns will be run throughout the remainder of the school year. Each classroom at Reed Elementary School completed, uh, com com competed to collect the most non-perishable food, food items and to treat uh, and a treat from the principal. Kindergarten uh, was the winning class with a collection of over 282 items. Overall, the school collected more than 1,000 food items during that drive. Oakwood Elementary School held a uh, school food drive where they collected 4,343 food items, which was a great way to help the community during uh, this holiday season. A big thank you goes out to Smith Elementary School uh, and to all their special guest readers uh, from, uh, from the board and uh, district office who spent time with students uh, during uh, reading some of their favorite books. I think there are three, four of us at the table who took part in <laughs> that event. Pictured here are more of the special guests from uh, uh, Smith, um, Smith's reading at, uh, at Smith Elementary School. 
This is the fourth year of Oshkosh West High School's boys varsity basketball team has partnered with students um, with uh, special needs for an annual shopping trip to the mall. Congratulations to Oshkosh West soccer players, Edgar and Dan pictured here, who were named to the Wisconsin Soccer Coaches Association All-State Team. And congratulations also to the Oshkosh West students, Ryan and Maddie, who qualified for the Special Olympics uh, State um, Bowling Competition. Perry Tipler Middle School and Alps 7th and 8th grade student uh, choir students performed once on this island, Junior, which was filled with almo almost nonstop singing and dancing. It was another great performance and students should be very proud of their hard work. Pictured here are several OSD employees from Carl Traeger Elementary School who recently uh, showcased um, innovative practices at the TIES conference in Minneapolis where some topics included uh, coding clubs, professional development, student <coughs> voices, and leveraging uh, social media. Congratulations to Oakwood Elementary School for attending the uh, seating level in the Green and Healthy Schools Pro uh, Wisconsin program. The program helps to reduce the school's environmental impact and related costs and improves health and wellness and increases environmental and sustainability literacy. Knowing how difficult it is to be away from family and friends over the holidays, Reed Elementary students uh, made cards and wrote letters to service people uh, overseas who will not be able to be home for Christmas. This is just another way of Reed students uh, displaying their Reed way uh, through all kind of acts of kindness. The 21st century learning community, Lighted Schoolhouse, Melt and Amp participated in the Hour of Code during which uh, in a month of December to learn more about computer programming. Uh, they worked with UW Extension uh, in uh, Lego Robotics activities and Oshkosh Public Library hosted the introduction to Ozbots. Carl Traeger Middle School students organized and adopted a family for the Salvation Army and pr provided a family of six with gifts and uh, other essentials for this Christmas. Oak Lawn uh, families uh, took part in the mid-morning Kiwanis food drive uh, collecting more than 30 boxes of items. First grade students participated in one hour of code learning, uh, the basics um, about computer coding, and students at Oak Lawn have been busy decorating doors after school with Mr. Waters uh, and building positive relationships. Oak Lawn Student Council spent time over the past week ringing bells for the Salvation Army and shopping for toys at two local domestic, uh, for uh, students at two local domestic abuse centers. And some statistics that show that 49% of uh, Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. Oshkosh has estimated that 12% of households live in uh, poverty. Oshkosh North Community students too uh, partnered with the Oshkosh Fire Department and the Salvation Army for the 19th annual uh, uh, food and toy drive helping to collect new toys, non-perishable food items for families in need this holiday season. And Shapiro STEM Academy first graders uh, shared some holiday cheer by singing at the EAA leaders, um, uh, leaders event. Uh, afterwards they were able to explore the EAA museum and fifth grade students from Shapiro STEM Academy worked on their perseverance by trying to break out um, uh, break out with an hour of code. And fifth grade students pictured here celebrated the DARE graduation recently. DARE is a police officer led series of classroom lessons to teach students how to resist peer pressure and live productive and violent free lives. And lastly, you will see a collection of um, activities that the superintendent participated in in the last two week period. With that, completes the superintendent's report for this week. Um, we're bordering on uh, on uh, heavy duty um, with So, all right, thank you. thank you. Okay, how about uh, are there any other committee chairs that have reports? I have. After you, Madam. <laughs> the uh, facility and finance committee met um, on December fourteenth. Uh, the first order of business we had was the Jackson Street Community Green Place proposal. 
Representatives from the historic Jackson Street Neighborhood Association presented a proposal for a community identif identity place located by the unused tennis courts at Jackson Field. It would be a 60 foot by 60 foot space with the entrance on the corner of Nevada and Jackson. A sketch of the proposal would dis was distributed in the meeting. The project was um, would be done in three stages over nine years of a time span. The first phase was years one through three, would establish the entrance, perhaps a historical sign, plant trees around the perimeter, lay mulch, purchase benches and a waste can. Phase two was years four through five, would lay out some mulch to cut down on grass cutting, create a walkway from the street to the gathering area, create raised beds and plant bushes. Phase three, years six through nine, would include the planting of additional bushes and trees, additional benches, and perhaps a shelter, installation of our overhead solar lighting, and construction <coughs> of a welcome arbor. The group would need the cooperation from the district since it is the district property. It was suggested that the installation of the overhead lighting be put on an earlier phase for security purposes. It was also suggested to ask the city to lease the area from the district to utilize um, the city grants and the resources. It was believed that the city would not be interested in developing another park. There was concern about long-term maintenance. It was asked if the city would be interested in shared ownership with the district passing on uses as well as maintenance. Uh, the Board of Education will be meeting jointly with the City Council on January 31st and Superintendent Mack um, will ask him if we can add this to that agenda to talk about that with them. Uh, the next um, thing we discussed was summer school pay schedule. This was discussed last week's board workshop. It was noted that the district was not able to offer certain high school classes because the inability to secure teachers. In 2017, which was last summer, 23% of summer school staff were non-Oshkosh Area School District teachers. In years past, 100% were Oshkosh Area School District staff. The proposal included increasing the salary of summer school teachers from $23.30 to $30 and increasing the summer school principal salary from $10,000 to $30,000. Historically, until six years ago, the current building administrator was the summer school principal. When the district started hiring teachers with administrative licenses, the principal stipend was never adjusted current staff are not receiving an administrator salary but they are being asked to do administrative tasks. The total proposed increase to salaries would be $125,685. This would be offset by reorganizing high school remedial and credit recovery staff resulting in a de decrease in high school level summer FTE, additional enrollment at the elementary level due to extension of days and the ability to staff all requested sections and overall increase in summer school student FTEs. This proposal will be going to the board resolution um, next week, which it was on today's resolution. And I know that um, the Julie had put in here about how that was all broken down and how, um, how that was to be paid um, through the program. The next thing we talked about was technology budget. Um, Dr. Gunlock explained the high carryover going into this year he reviewed the goals of the budget and also gave a brief overview of E-rate funding. The current budget of $2.6 million supports the strategic plan goals as well as the 2014 and 2016 referendum initiatives. He went through the budget so sources, both one-time and reoccurring. These included $60,000 for the Media Center budget, $35,000 for Epcot, referendum security camera budget of $600,000, and CY Press settlement resources of $250,000. It was noted that the media and Epcot budgets have been unchanged since 2010. Both the referendum and the CY Press settlement are one-time budget sources. Am I saying that right? The CY Press? Right. What? Cypre. Cypre? Yeah. Thank Not you. Exactly I knew I was saying it that. wrong, but I'm just making sure. Oh, you're good. <laughs> the Cypre settlement is being used to fund teachers to attend tech-related conferences. It was also noted <coughs> that the entire infrastructure was replaced using last year's budget. E-rate was the disruptor and why things got off schedule. E-rate pays for phones and internet. 
Districts must expend the resources before applying and before, use the, before being granted the E-rate funds to which they are entitled. The network project was funded out of 1617 while getting a late E-rate reimbursement in 1718. Several upgrade projects were moved to 2017-18. The Lakeside Fiber project was not in the original plan. However, the security cameras would not have worked without the fiber there. The district could start turning this into a revenue generator by leasing fiber to other entities. Improvements leveraging the budget <coughs> include one, replacing the $40,000 per year backup strategy to a hyper-converged system allowing Oshkosh Area School District to manage their own disaster recovery solution with reduced service hours. Two, door access and door camera projects. Three, <coughs> 50 user VDI initiative to provide windows only access to Chromebooks, part of the VMware project. Four, teacher device replacement at a, ahead of schedule by three to six months. Five, check out Wi-Fi access for students who have none, um, that would be at home. Six, classroom technology project in buildings, and eight, oh, I skipped seven, reselling, recycling old technology, return cost to budget and buildings and eight, community goal and robotics coding and AI literacy for students K through 12. There was a question as how to how well the district is adhering to district policy with regard to consultant fees. Dr. Gunlock responded that the consultant fees are being reduced as well as being shown up front versus being hidden within project costs. We also spoke about long range facility master plan, financial analysis of facility study. Um, representatives from Bray and Associates presented the fi uh, financial analysis of the facility study to the committee. The goal was to give the committee a sense of where the district is as it in terms of the facilities. The study outlined needs of a building with building basis which totally which totaled approximately 107 million dollars. It was noted that there are repair items only and there is no renovation modernizing included in the report. The goal of the study was to identify and document needs. It was noted that there are these are st today's dollars and 4% inflation would need to be added on top of these numbers as time went on. The study identified needs and can be used as a management tool moving forward. There was a question as to what point it might be better to build new. Bray representatives responded that people will have different opinions. Some things to consider in making that decision would be one, how it is affecting in teaching and learning, two, deferred maintenance costs, three, historical significance of a building, four, strength of neighborhood association, etc. This process does not start out saying schools will be closed or rebuilt. However, the process will eventually take itself there. The master plan will be brought to the board in January as a workshop. It will include different components that can enhance teaching and learning. The intent is to engage the community in a series of focus groups and prepare to go to survey, not to be confused with a referendum. It needs to be communicated that the intent is only to talk to the community about the plan and to educate them on all the issues. The next process will lay out a long range facility vision. Where do we focus investment dollars that we do have? The benefit of going through a master planning session is the need to get a away from five to ten year plan and focus on a 20 to 30 year plan. Our schools are getting older. Some questions to keep in mind are what is our model? What does a proper, properly operating school look like and how do we responsibly fund this? And then we were supposed to talk about um, review the budget and reduction items and which of those were implemented and their impact on student learning. Obviously, we didn't get to that. It was a very long meeting. <laughs> um, so, so due to um, the time constraints, the topic was postponed, and we will have that in our January meeting. Thank you. Thank you. That was okay. a long meeting. Okay. The Education <coughs> Committee met on Thursday, December 7th at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we received an update on the program Rise Up, and we had uh, participants from Catalpa and Samaritan represented at the meeting. We, the presenters talked about how the district excels in professional development. Oh, I'm sorry. The three components of Rise Up are, include education, screening, and targeted and extensive therapy. So first we talked about education and how the district excels in professional development, including QPR. 
um, which is a yearly training for secondary level staff and bi-yearly training for elementary school staff. And QPR, by the way, stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer. Um, we also talked about PBIS, Conscious Discipline, Mindfulness, Restorative Practice, and DOTS. We also heard about the training for, for parents and community, community members in the youth mental field, including first aid, safe training, mindfulness, conscious discipline, and love and logic. We also talked about sources of strength, which was mentioned in the Good News Report this evening. This <coughs> is a training program for students, which was held last week at both high schools. It was marketed as a suicide prevention program, which focuses on student strengths in an effort to send out messages of hope, health, and strength. The premise of the program is to try and involve kids from all walks in an effort to get them to build bridges that will float between social groups looking for buy-in and send messages to all student groups. The training with the students was a great success with 65 students participating at North and about 75 students participating at West. Regarding screening, we talked about the district's approach to mental health screenings. Uh, universal screening of students is done through Samaritan. We are in our fifth year of screening, but it, we uh, used to be using, or now we now switch to a passive consent model where parents must opt out specifically of the screening of their child this year, which is a change from the past. It was discovered that less than 20% of students were participating in the screening with the active consent model. And now um, we, the target is to have 70% participation in the screening this year due to the change. The screening is free and confidential. Parents are notified three times in advance of the screening and in individual follow-up is done with students where they, um, <coughs> where there are any concerns that arise from the screening. Parents are contacted about concerns and provided recommendations about community resources. If a connection is recommended, further follow-up with the family takes place for 90 days. Catalpa staff is at the school sites for appointments with students to make it easier and more convenient for parents and students. Um, unfortunately, the number of students who have been flagged with some area of concern is up over last year. However, contact with parents is going well so far and the staff has been reporting wonderful connections with parents. Uh, we are in discussions about possibly starting the screenings at the middle school level in the future because seventh grade seems to be the year of change where start, students start to have feelings of concern and so we're going to explore that in the future. Regarding the target targeted extensive therapy. Catalpa provides state certified services for students at North, West, and Webster Middle School, Washington and Reed. And we've seen a demand, we've seen an increase in demand for these services. Um, in just this school year, 74 students have already received on-site therapy with a total of 355 completed therapy sessions. Whereas in the full last year, school year, 55 students received on-site therapy. All schools are maximizing the services offered and Catalpa praises the district for embracing the program. Um, collaboration between Rise Up and People Services and schools has provided increased support for students at risk for suicide. <coughs> it has gone well in a very short period of time because everyone has worked together very well. The teaming with People Services and Rise Up Services has been a beneficial partnership and it is anticipated that strengths will only continue to improve over time. Um, we discuss future meeting agendas, uh, student engagement and service discussion, and we adjourned at 9.20 a.m. and the next meeting is January 4th, I think at 8.30. Okay, thank you. Barb? There were some very long meetings uh, <laughs> held this month. I have the minutes from the uh, policy and governance meeting of December 14th, which followed the long facilities and finance meeting on the same day. I'll attempt to uh, group some of these so that I don't have to read this entire document, three pages worth. Um, one of the first things we did was to take a look at policies 1630.01, 3430.01, and 4430.01, which all deal with the family and, and medical leave of absence. Um, our Director of Human Resources, Lori Myron, explained that language had been removed a few months, months ago and was replaced by a link to the federal policy, but then Eola suggested that the language should be put back in and the link removed, so that's what we did. Um, there were some additional Neola update changes regarding eligibility as well. We also looked at policy 5310.01 on emergency nursing services. 
uh, Matt Kemmerer, ex Kemmerer explained that the review of the emergency nursing policy is required on an annual basis. This is something that currently happens already in our district, along with the new requirement that policies be reviewed by the nurses before board approval. The district does have a health advisory committee that meets three times a year and reviews the health policies. All of these policies that I've noted so far were, uh, were approved uh, with the changes recommended and have been um, forwarded to, to tonight's board meeting for full board approval. We also looked at policy 5330, which deals with the administration of medication and emergency care. Again, Matt Kemmerer explained that the addition of a provision um, was inserted regarding the use of EpiPens. The district does stock EpiPens and every year a standing order is signed so that each school has at least one available. Training sessions are held annually on how to use the EpiPens along with other medical training. Mandated steps listed in the policy are followed even though this was not listed in the policy before the district had followed those steps. Again, the committee approved the changes and the policy has come forward for tonight's meeting. It's on the agenda. We looked at policy 8452, automated external defibrillators, commonly referred to as AEDs. Again, Matt Kemmerer explained that the change to this policy was the requirement for AED training be provided to students. The district had already been doing this through the health curriculum, but now it is officially required and part of the policy. This is also on tonight's agenda for board approval. Policy 7540.03 deals with student technology acceptable use and safety. Dr. Gunlock explained that the changes in this policy were more for housekeeping purposes, referring to bylaw 0100, where definitions are located. The board will regulate the use of resources, adding personal communication devices. Because students use the wireless network in the district, there's a reminder of illegal and unkind actions such as cyberbullying that would be disciplined. The policy allows access to social media where appropriate. Restrictions are in place depending on the grade level blocking different sites and social media. But those same sites are not blocked for staff. Uh, this policy is also on tonight's agenda for uh, full board approval. Policy 7540.04 deals with staff technology, acceptable use and safety. Dr. Gunlock explained the changes to this policy, again referring to bylaw 0100 dealing with uh, definitions. The board will regulate staff technology use in a manner that is consistent with the law. Use of personal, personal devices is also governed by policy. Illegal and unkind actions are referred to in the staff policy as well as in the student policy. And there's a reference to there being no privacy when devices are used. That is, if you're using district-owned property and you're using the district's website, um, those are subject to open records and they are not personal property. This policy is also on tonight's agenda for full, full board approval. Policy 7540.06 deals with district-issued staff email accounts. Dr. Gunlock explained to the committee that this is a new policy as we did not have such a policy in place. The district-issued email is not for conducting personal business, and emails are automatically archived for seven years. This policy is also on tonight's agenda for review. Policy 740, excuse me, 7540.07, district issued student email accounts. Dr. Gunlock noted that this policy will make processes and expectations cleaner. The new policy is specific to students. Email is now a student's identity and is used to sign in to many services. The district applies with the data privacy, uh, excuse me, data privacy training is ongoing. And this policy is also on tonight's agenda. Policy 8305, Information Security, Dr. Gunlock explained that this policy requires all individuals to indicate they have gone through yearly training. The district was already in the process of doing this, but now we have a policy that mandates the training. Again, this policy is on tonight's agenda. Policy 5136, Personal Communication Devices. Um, this policy defines personal communication devices and is on tonight's agenda for approval. Policy 5111, eligibility of non-resident students. Dr. Jones explained that this policy was being brought back to the committee for further adjustment after the November Policy and Governance Committee meeting. Neola had recommended having the district's legal counsel review the committee's requested changes. Attorney Jim Macy recommended
putting back the language that had been omitted by the committee in November um, so that we were in compliance with statutory requirements. This uh, policy is also on tonight's agenda. <laughs> policy 5771, search and seizure. The Policy and Governance Committee had requested that Attorney Jim Macy review the policy updates and language about admission of guilt regarding requiring a breathalyzer test. The committee suggested not including a reference to guilt in the student handbook. If a student refuses to take the test, refusal to participate would lead to disciplinary action similar to that of a failed test, but based on the um, premise that the student had refused to cooperate with administration, but not as a admission of guilt. That was Jim Macy's um, analysis and that had been supported by the committee at the November meeting. This is also on tonight's agenda. Finally, um, <laughs> we reviewed policy 1662 dealing with employee anti-harassment. I had asked that this policy be included in the meeting for discussion and requested that we change language so as to remove any possible uh, perception of bias if in the unlikely circumstance that a person accused of harassment might be the superintendent and administrator or a board member then the board's legal counsel or liability count carrier would assume the role of the district's compliance officer for the complaint rather than a central office administrator who works closely with all of those individuals it was also requested that legal counsel review this change and the policy return to the next policy and governance meeting in January for further discussion and approval before coming before the board. So that one is not on tonight's agenda. We, w we will be meeting on January 11, 2018 at 10 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Right, are there any other reports? I think that that's all of them, right? Mm. Okay, so is there anybody here that would like to address the board on non-agenda related topics? How about agenda related topics? Okay, we'll go right into the consent resolution agenda. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. I've been asked to pull 5A, 5B, 7, and 8. And 9. And Well, that's already individually. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yep. Okay. Any others? Or does anybody want to pull <laughs> any of 6? How about that? <laughs> okay. Um, then the board will consider approval of 1, minutes of November 15, 2017, regular board meeting, 2, Minutes of December 6, 2017, regular board meeting. Three, minutes of December 6, 2017, executive session at regular board meeting. Four, bills payable. Uh, six, policy updates. A, 1630.01, family medical leave of absence, M FMLA. B, 3430.01, family and medical leave of absence, FMLA. C, 4430.01, family medical leave of absence, FMLA. Four, uh, sorry, D, good grief, five, three. 1.0, .01, emergency nursing services e 5330 administration of medication emergency care f 8452 automated external defibrillators aed g 7540.03 student technology acceptable use and safety h 7540.04 staff technology acceptable use and safety i 7540.06 district issued staff email account J, 7540.07, district issued student email account. K, 8305, information security. L, 5136, personal communication devices. M, 5111, eligibility of non-resident students. And N, uh, 5771, search and seizure. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Olmstead? Aye. Olmstead, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Aye. Evans, I, Garner. Aye. Garner, I, Herzog. Aye. Herzog, I, Washington, Perry. Okay, 5A, personnel, appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, and salary schedule. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, and salary schedule as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, discussion. Yeah, this was this was my <coughs> uh, one of my rare times that I pull something. Um, 
and I wanted to do about the, to talk about the temporary appointment. Uh, Mr. Bouchelle called me last night, and he's having some discussions about compensation, which I what, didn't want to know anything about. But he would he said he would feel more comfortable if we could pull that item until whatever they're discussing gets settled. So I know it's unusual, but I would like to amend this. And if I if I'm not saying it right, <laughs> please correct me. I'd like to amend this resolution to uh, leave out the temporary appointment of Mr. Bouchel. And I could just add to it. I've discussed it um, with uh, with Lori and. Uh, we can certainly, it's a second semester appointment. Uh, you'll have time for a future board meeting to have it resolved. Um, we'll have it on the January 10th meeting uh, for action. Second. So, okay, so do we need to, okay, wait. So do we need to discuss you, his? Yes, amendment. Okay. If there is any discussion. Okay, so discussion, okay, so a discussion on removing the temporary appointment of Mr. Bouchelle. Okay, so we'll call the roll on that on amendment, the amendment, on the amendment to remove uh, temporary appointment. Okay. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmstead? Aye. Olmstead, aye. Olmstead, aye. Amendment carried. Okay. Any other discussion on 5A? Okay. Please call the roll. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Molly Perry? Okay. Resolution 5B, which is retirements. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the retirements as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So move. Second. Discussion. Uh, Mrs. Garner, I had asked that this uh, be, be uh, pulled tonight. Once again, we have two uh, long-time employees within the district who are choosing to enter a new age and stage of life called retirement and so I think it's appropriate to wish them well in their new endeavors and to thank them for their service to the children and the, and the community of, of the school district. Jeannie Bell is retiring from her position as assistant custodian fire person one at Franklin Elementary and has been employed with the district since the year 2000. Bonnie Keck, a cook, cook helper from Reed Elementary School has been employed with the district since 2011. So once again, we thank them for their service to the students and the staffs and uh, their respective schools and wish them well in their new, in new ventures. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Eliza? Aye. Eliza, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Carlin? Aye. Okay, resolution number seven uh, is a super superintendent's goals for 2017 and 18. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the superintendent's goals for the 2017-18 school year as follows. District wide literacy, uh, number two, superintendent goal OESD strategic plan 2016 to 2019. Priority one, improve student learning for all and priority five, Strengthen partnerships and community engagements. And number three, superintendent transition plan as filed with the secretary to the Board of Education on December 20, 2017 in accordance with the rules, regulations, and policies of the Board of Education. So move. Second. Discussion. Mrs. Garner, I had also asked that we pull this one. I think it's really important that the, the, first of all, the community understand what these goals are. And it's also important for the board to understand what these are because they have to be measured. And we have a short time frame here because with uh, Mr. Mack's retirement at the end of June, this is a short window of opportunity to be able to measure results. So um, Mr. Mack responded to my request to help me clarify the literacy goal, which is always an important one, um, and has defined some things that need to take place by, uh, or will happen by May 2019. Uh, I would ask that, and I will support this resolution, but I would ask that we have some uh, additional language at some point defining what will happen by December, excuse me, <laughs> May of, of 2018. So maybe instead of 85% of the students being at grade level in those two areas, maybe it will be 80% or 75% or, or some appropriate number, which, whatever you deem appropriate. Um, 
So I, I, I'm good with that one. And then on the, the strategic plan, I think we, uh, we had discussed this uh, last week in open session. Just trying to find it here. Um, increasing graduation rates among minority students and increasing the success of minority students and first generation college students. I really support this notion of making sure that all of our students, as um, Mrs. Con Ms. Conrad uh, does a great job of reminding us that our students need to be college career and community ready. Um, and th that in order to do that, we really do need to uh, look at what's happening in elementary and middle schools relative to closing the achievement gap between our um, majority and minority student groups. So I commend this goal as well. And, I, and uh, the, the notion of Mr. Mack having a plan in place by the end of June with commitments from our sister institutions um, in the area to promote this notion I think is commendable. And finally, the tra uh, superintendent transition plan. Um, they say that it takes a village to uh, raise a child. I think it also takes a village to, to <laughs> make sure that the superintendent has success. And so the superintendent working with his executive team and the uh, staff in the school district is important to make sure that um, the new superintendent will understand some of the, the issues and the successes of the district moving forward. Obviously the uh, board has a, has a stake in uh, educating and orienting the new superintendent, but I think these are all viable goals and I'm comfortable with um, the, pl the uh, notion of having plans in place for goals two and three. The only thing I would ask is that for goal one on literacy is that we have some numbers that would um, be such that we could measure them by, by uh, May of 2018. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Evans? Aye. Aye, Garner. Aye. Garner, I, Herzog. Aye. Herzog, I, Olmsted. Aye. Olmsted, I, Carlin. Aye. Carlin, I, Carlin, I, Eliason. Aye. Eliason, I, Motion Carried. Okay, resolution number A, 2018, Summer School Program Plan. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the 2018 Summer School Program Plan, including the increase in compensation for summer school teachers and principals, as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mrs. Garner, I had also asked that this one be pulled. I have no doubt that um, Mrs. Bailey and Mr. Dirks work very hard in terms of um, basically making a 12-month commitment to the success of the summer school program. My concern is that we are being asked to triple their salaries in one year at the same time that we're, show, we're being shown numbers that the budget impact would be reduced for a third consecutive year. I would support a two-year phase-in of the uh, proposed increase whereby uh, their salaries would double going into uh, the 17-18 year and then uh, be reviewed to in be increased by that other um, similar amount going into 18-19. Okay, so would you like to amend this? Uh, yes, I, I support everything else in the report. I think there's a great deal of data that they have provided and, and Mrs. Con Ms. Conrad has provided. In fact, Ms. Conrad went out of her way to provide additional data uh, showing how many students had earned um, high school credit toward graduation and I really appreciate her efforts in that regard. Um, but at this time I would propose amending this so that the increases for the um, summer school principals uh, be increased to $10,000 for the coming year rather than $15,000 each. So th that would be my motion. Uh, I would I would uh, continue to recommend what um, the uh, Facilities and Finance Committee reviewed on, on that issue. At the present time, we would be expecting that our compensation on an hourly basis for our um, principals would be less than the established rate for teachers and the amount of time that um, is continuing to be put in. Um, bearing in mind that uh, <coughs> if anything occurred, uh, it's been um, because we've had um, uh, individuals, both uh, present and uh, past <coughs> ones, acquiescing to um, a very dated salary that goes back um, for at least um, 
uh, 10 or 15 years. Um, it, it, the adjustment is, is, is due uh, in the fact that uh, we're really playing catch up here and we recognize that it's a large jump but it's, um, it's also commensurate with um, what we would expect the individuals to uh, be compensated for, for both number of hours per month and on an annual basis. And uh, that compensation rate um, uh, should not be less than those that are being supervised. Julie? I didn't know if we wanted um, historical information with this. Um, the summer school principal position had historically been um, an add-on stipend or an additional duty onto a building administrator. And so when that, um, when that stipend was set, it was based off of a building administrator's um, compensation. So, um, and it hasn't been adjusted, I believe, Mr. Mackey, it's, it's been at least 10 or 15 years since that has been adjusted, or if not more. And so currently, um, or in the past few years, the role has been assumed by um, a teacher, a classroom teacher, um, that has administrative, that has an administrative license and doing an administrative responsibility. If we go and we look at what a commensurate um, administrative FTE is, it would be approximately between 0.2 and 0.25 of an FTE. Um, my concern is is that we are not honoring and we are not recognizing the level of responsibility um, that these two individuals or anybody that would be in this position would take on. And so we, and if you noticed in the packet and in the um, additional information that was given, we had, I had also talked about that if a building level administrator took this on as an additional assignment, that the stipend would actually be lower because we are compensating for an administrative position. My concern is, is we have individuals that are hiring, we have individuals that are screening, and they are responsible for supervision of many students and many staff members do that during that summer school piece. They should be compensated accordingly. I, again, it's nothing personal. I mm -hmm. would prefer oh, I a two-year phase in. Mm -hmm. um, we have many other needs in the district, and we've got uh, schools that are dealing with issues related to the inability to purchase uh, guided reading materials. So we've got inequity there. At the same time, we have a, a need mm -hmm. to improve our literacy skills. So I would support a two-year phase in. As far as the uh, historical perspective uh, relative to building principals or assistant principals at least being involved in mm -hmm. uh, the summer school duties uh, the um, compensation I believe was set relative to the number of vacation days that they in effect would give up in the summer that's I believe correct. How in that the, was in the summer correct calculated at one point that may mm -hmm. have changed but um, anyway I think the question could be called mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna, is there any further discussion on the amendment to do a two-year phase in? I don't think there was a second, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I think well, it died. can we have a, dis <laughs> no, we can't discuss it. Yep, you're right, sorry. So is there a second on Barb's amendment so that we can discuss it, her amendment? I'll oh, sorry. Okay. I'd like to discuss. Okay, <laughs> so let's discuss it. All right, um, so I'm looking at page one of the summer school principal hours by month a document that, that was yeah. provided to us. Okay. Um, and so I, I haven't done the math, so I, I'm necessarily kind of just putting this out there. But it looks like in the month of March, beginning in March of, of say, if this was last year, mm -hmm. we'd be asking that principal or that administrator of the summer school program to start working 40 hours a week related to summer school programming or am I reading that wrong that is 40 plus additional hours to their current with their, with addition, their current roles and, and outside roles. of the because it would be outside of their scope of what they are currently doing in their positions so it doesn't if it's a current OASD staff member it's 40 additional hours outside of their current responsibilities Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that thought for a little bit, and I'm gonna see if anyone else has anything to say. Okay. So. Any other discussion? <coughs> yes. I'm just I'm curious, uh, Ms. Conrad. It, it, it's um, <laughs> it's um, theoretical or it's uh, conjecture, but I I am sympathetic to Dr. Herzog's argument that a one-time leap um, is a is a <laughs> it's a big step. What would the implications be? Is it possible to talk about the implications of a two-year phase in? Um, I don't mean if only, but 
in part that it's um, maybe more palatable to the public and to the to our broad district uh, employee base and um, do you see a downside to uh, to your faith my, well my con my concern is is that currently this past school year we were asking our summer if you look at page two of exhibit B um, we were asking our school principals they were working at approximately ten dollars per hour and so that is not even at the level of what we are asking we're paying summer school teachers mm -hmm. as far as or even if even if we did an hourly rate of that's not even what we pay for outside curriculum pay so for educators that are working um, on curriculum projects those types of things that's not even at that level my concern is is that this is a this is lagging and we haven't made we should have made this adjustment a while ago and so at the same time this is the this is the perfect storm of we need to make sure that we bring into line our teacher summer school pay as also the administrators that are overseeing and running the program in that that rate per hour effectively is um, less than what we're paying Paris in the summer. Any other discussion? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, was there a reason why you guys picked three years or? Three times here. Three, yeah, three tripling. times. Sorry, sorry. Tripling. Yeah, so on, um, in Exhibit B, we talked about, we talked through the, the number of hours, and I did it based off of a calculation based off of um, FTE, of what mm -hmm. a building administrator would be, and 500 hours is approximately between 0.2 and 0.25 FTE of a building administrator. So if we looked at um, a compensation of an elementary principal, that would be commensurate with that. Um, the other thing is, is if you take 500 hours, um, it also works out this way, if you take 500 hours times $30 of what a teacher summer school pay is that comes out to $15,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. so I mean when you when you slice yeah. it both ways um, actually I think we're coming in low mm -hmm. as far as compensation goes for the summer school principals mm -hmm. yeah so just so I'm straight you're asking for a $10,000 for the first two years and then 5,000 on the third year no she right. was saying a two-year no. phase in so instead of going, well, that's why I asked the question. <laughs> instead of going from five to fifteen, I'm suggesting we go from five to ten, and then in the third, the following year, go up to fifteen. And we're okay with the special education coordinator at, at nine. Mm -hmm. the, both the size and the volume is considerably different. That would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be the extended school year special education coordinator. Okay, any further discussion on this amendment? Okay. I'm kind uh, of struggling with it because it's, to me it's just a little bit out of nowhere. Um, What's I mean, a little bit out of nowhere? The just amendment or the The action? amendment. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess for me it's, I'd be, I'd be welcome into, I mean, I'd like to hear more of what the administration has to say on it if they have to put any other numbers down and see what they come up in regard to that um, can I share what I why yeah. I'm not going to vote for this sure. is um, when when there is um, 10 years of doing the wrong thing this is one of those bitter pills that we're just gonna have to swallow and whether we do it all this year or half this year and half next year I think we got to do the right thing and these people need to be paid appropriately, and they haven't been for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an insult to say, not so fast. Mm -hmm. Does well, that make sense? Say that again. So, say that we're again. gonna we're gonna triple their salaries. Yes, that's gonna happen. Okay. So I don't see the purpose of waiting. I think okay. that I want to jump in here. We're not tripling their salaries. Mm -hmm. uh, that, sorry, you're right. Thank you. Thank that's you. really Correct. bad. We're not doing that. <laughs> I mean, it's good, it's but it's not summer. what we're doing. Correct. Thank you. We're yeah. 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 We're, yeah. <laughs> we're tripling Thank their stipend, stipend for just stipend. their summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank um, you. And the, I, I, the other, may I just add and interject, and I did say this to the Facilities and Finance Committee uh, also, is that um, uh, we have um, uh, experienced individuals occupying the position. Um, it takes a level of training to bring a person up to speed in carrying out all the details relating to that. Um, if we were to having to replace a position again, or positions again, um, starting over, uh, the reality is it falls on uh, Julie Julie's back 
um, to um, guide and provide the training again and frankly step into the gap um, with getting the job done. And um, uh, Julie's um, workload is um, uh, at uh, as high a level as um, uh, it's amazing what she tolerates um, with com what comes to her. And um, uh, I, would, um, I would be concerned again about the workload that comes to Julie uh, in making sure because of having quality people in covering those positions and after having um, both um, uh, previous, um, we, we did have the assistance initially of previous occupant of the position, uh, Pete Cernhaus, who helped with some of the transition, but um, uh, it would be unreasonable to expect him to come back and start over again with training. And the bottom line is when the job needs to get done and suddenly you're retraining again, uh, you're dumping on Julie and uh, she has a full load. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think my initial concern why I started off with like the amount of hours mm -hmm. that someone's working in addition, if you know, if they're working in our system already mm -hmm. um, and they're working a full-time job and we're asking them to do, to do this, that becomes my concern is, is that, that they're being paid properly for that. And, and you know, starting, you know, we're not even, I'm just talking 40, 40 hours a week on top of the regular 40 hour a week job starting in March. Prior to that, it was, you know, 40, 40 a week plus 24 or 15 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and only getting $5,000, if I, that's correct, mm -hmm. right? $5,000 for, uh, for essentially a year's work of being a summer school administrator. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not necessarily fair or equal. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an exit. I'm sorry. Um, and, and so and that's that's where I was kind of struggling with with that also. So I'd I'd much rather get this up to par quickly and take the hit on it than sit there and still struggle to find the right people that we want mm -hmm. to be in these positions um, and make sure that everyone's being paid equally as they mm -hmm. should be for those for those roles <coughs> in the summer. So I would though I, I, I I, I like the idea that you made the suggestion, but I'm just really struggling with the fact is that is that the timeliness of it. Um, is it more beneficial to do that over time? In some regards, yes. But are we looking to uh, enhance our summer school program so that it creates more essentially revenues for us? Yes, we are. And I think this is one of the ways of doing that is, is putting and paying, putting the right people in there and paying them the right amount to do that. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, um, so then let's call the roll on the amendment. Garner? No. Garner, no. Herzog? Yes. Herzog? Aye. Olmsted? Nay. Olmsted, no. Peschel? No. Peschel, no. Carlin? Nay. Carlin, no. Eliason? No. Eliason, no. Evan? No. Okay, so back to the original resolution. Any other discussion on that? I yes, would, sir. and I just, it's a note of thanks to the, <laughs> the community we have here, right, for Dr. Herzog for, for challenging, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, and d defending the case all around, having a thoughtful discussion. It has been my overall experience with administrative staff, with their board, and mm -hmm. I, I think those are, I don't know if they're courageous, but they are straight up, straightforward sessions that we need to have, mm -hmm. so thank you Absolutely. all. Absolutely. So, so I have I have one more comment. It actually, it's right along with Steve's, and it's supportive of, of, I think, Dr. Herzog's notion here is that, you know, come this time next year, we can look at this again and mm -hmm. to look at, you know, numbers of is, did we succeed in that? And, mm -hmm. I, and I assume that's what's going to happen next mm -hmm. year at this time is we're going to have this conversation again. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see whether uh, there were other issues or whether there was lots of positives and this turns out to be really beneficial mm -hmm. to us. And at that time, we get to make an assessment of it again. And so this isn't the end all, this is possibly the first step into improving this portion of, of the services that we provide in the community. Mm -hmm. And I would like to add the comment, we did discuss this possibility of um, uh, the compensation adjustment for teachers in the meet and confer session with the teachers organization. And uh, they were um, very pleased with um, uh, both the recognition steps and the um, experience steps. And, um, and our firm commitment that we would prefer from mm -hmm. a standpoint of quality and delivery of service to have our own teachers employed in this process as opposed to outside teachers mm -hmm. who do not Absolutely. know the district, do not know the curriculum, and um, 
uh, our, our teachers received this uh, proposal as we discussed with them last week um, with um, very uh, joyful okay. uh, uh, that was very positively received all right I have to test Mrs. Conrad here okay. did you get did you come up with the number of of how many Oshkosh area school district teachers or employees were Employees in the service yep. Program? yep, it was actually. Um, it was in it our was, report. Yep, it oh. was in the report and it was captured in there, and I believe it was 23%. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. And the actual the actual number is listed within. Um, it's listed in Exhibit A, and it's also listed within the report. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, um, the number or percentage that have been working for us based on re competitive salaries in our neighboring districts. It proves that our teachers are very smart. They went where there was more money. <laughs> so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. Please call the roll. Herzog? No. Herzog? No. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted? Aye. Keschel? Aye. Keschel? Aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin? Aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason? Aye. Evans? Aye. Evans? Aye. Garner? Aye. Garner? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. And now we have an individually considered resolution nine WASB resolutions to delegate assembly be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education hereby direct the uh, WASB delegate to support resolutions forwarded to all WASB members prior to the convening of the assembly be it further resolved that the WASB delegate is directed to vote on amendments or resolutions that arise from the floor of the delegate assembly in a manner that is consistent with the position of the original resolutions as filed with the secretary to the Board of Education on December 20, 2017, in accordance with the rules, regulations, and policies of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. And Mrs. Garner, okay. I wanted to uh, comment a, a little bit about the process here. The Wisconsin Association of School Boards invites all uh, school districts, and there are something like 420 of them, public school districts, to um, come up with any policies or resolutions that they would like to submit for consideration by all of those 400 plus um, public school districts. That's done over the, I think, August, September time frame. They're due as is, is noted in the uh, staff report by September 15th. Then the attorneys with the Wisconsin Association of School Boards uh, puts those into legal language uh, for the uh, what's called the delegate assembly. There are 15 uh, Wisconsin Association of School Board districts throughout the state and um, I have the good fortune thanks to the nomination of Mrs. Garner and Mr. Mack of serving as one of those 15 individuals. We then each may nominate two people from within our respective districts to be appointed uh, by the WASB board president to serve on that delegate assembly. They meet twice in the fall and they review all the policy and resolutions that have been forwarded to them. Uh, they do not discuss, well, they're not supposed to get <laughs> discussing the merits of the resolutions, but they basically have two questions to answer. Number one, is this a timely uh, uh, topic? Is this relevant in terms of what's going on in the outside world and secondly is this something that should be brought forth to all of the uh, member school districts if the proposals pass those two questions then they are forwarded to the school districts like these have been for each school district to consider the resolutions and policy changes that will be taken up at the January convention and approximately a half day is devoted to that process to, to go through all of these resolutions. Anyone can speak from the floor on these. Um, th I believe this will be Mr. Evans' second or third year mm -hmm. uh, representing the district at that delegate assembly. Um, the 15 board members of the WASB also have the opportunity to weigh in on these. Last year, every resolution that was proposed was approved with the exception of one. Um, and these um, can vary from year to year. Uh, I, I know that there are some um, uh, resolutions that repeal previous policies because of changes in state law. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a new one that was not, I know that was not part of last year's conversation. It's the last one in the list and it deals with uh, making sure that we have high quality uh, teachers in all of our classrooms. There's also one dealing with the WIAA 
maintaining <coughs> its um, autonomy. So the topics vary quite a bit. Um, there's one in here that was put forth by the Nina Board of Education. It's the one dealing with addressing the um, the law relative to the minimum days of instruction, mm -hmm. um, which allows for those districts that are exceeding expectations on the state tests to um, uh, be able to be more flexible with with those those numbers of days and hours. So. Um, it's a very complex process. It's a, it's a good exercise in democracy and action. If you're at the state convention, you're more than welcome to attend that delegate assembly, but only those who have been defined as the delegate from their respective district may actually vote. <coughs> but it, it can be quite spirited, as it was last year <laughs> on the one resolution that was defeated. Um, but it's an excellent, it's an excellent exercise. Um, and all of these then have implications for the WASB and what policies they pursue and what practices and uh, lobbying efforts, as it were, that they pursue with the state legislature to make sure that uh, the voice of public education is, is heard in the, the Senate and the Assembly and in the Governor's office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? So the uh, opinion of the board is to support all the resolutions? That's what we're voting on. Is there anything that anybody would like to pull or? Okay. okay. They all seemed reasonable to me, unless mm -hmm. Mr. Evans, you saw something that concerned you. Nope. Oh. All right. Call the roll. Aye. Homestead, I special. Aye. Special, I, Carolyn. Aye. Carolyn, I, Eliason. Aye. Eliason, I, Evans. Aye. Evans, I, Garner. Aye. Garner, I, Herzog. Aye. Herzog, I, motion carried. Okay, request for future agenda items. Anything? Oh, yes. Um, I know that Mr. Eliason had wanted to make contact with the Canadian um, entity firm. I'm not quite sure what the correct term would be to look at um, pr uh, practices that may not be common in American public education. Mm -hmm. I think um, we could perhaps link that or not, but even if we couldn't, I'd like to see a future agenda item that would deal with the no time to lose uh, document. Um, as your WASB representative, I had asked that that be sent to all superintendents in zone, we are in zone seven, by the way. Um, and all board members. I don't know if you received that yeah. or not, but th that was sent to you, and, and Mr. Mack sent you a copy of that as well. What I also included were three possible, um, they're called protocol strategies to discuss things other than what did you think of the article or <laughs> did you all read it or whatever. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if that uh, might be combined with uh, what what Mr. Eliason has proposed, <coughs> or it might be separate, but it is one of the WASB uh, resolutions that we we uh, just approved, mm -hmm. suggesting <coughs> that it should be taken up by uh, local school districts. I know that the Nina School District has taken it up with their board. They've also shared it with students, mm -hmm. um, not with the <coughs> idea that everything is implemented, but sometimes if you see or you hear about something that's going on in another entity or district, it, you may not adapt or adapt the whole thing, but it may trigger some creativity in terms of looking at continuous improvement and what we might do in, in our own district. So anyway, that's my explanation. And, and um, Steve and I have worked and we, we have a confirmation um, okay. for the evening of January 10th um, to have that, uh, that, we have to get specific on the time. We also have um, that evening, um, and associates um, following up with the full um, report and we would suggest that um, uh, we be very careful about other other things that night that I think um, I, I think the the issue of what uh, Barb has described uh, may deserve an entire evening unto itself which would be based on some of the discussion we have with the Canadian folks and and that we could tentatively look at that for the first meeting of uh, February okay. as being a, a really a workshop that uh, would be there and we would keep other items shorter. Um, I can easily see that we could spend uh, uh, 45 minutes to an hour with Bray on the questions that relate easily. to their presentation. 
uh, on um, really the follow-up to our major study yeah. and then at, and uh, I know that Steve has talked about an hour uh, that um, we would um, uh, work with the Canadian folks one of the things to make sure that we have visibility um, and the ability uh, to have a good conversation Skype will uh, work with uh, Dave and our technology folks and potentially being arranged somehow or another to have a large screen uh, for the discussion similar to when you uh, mm -hmm. uh, had a remote discussion with your superintendent search consultant if we can get something like that arranged I think it would be okay. um, much more comfortable for us so we're going to try to have that arrangement for the 10th as well and uh, we don't own that piece of equipment I think we borrowed it as I recall and uh, well, we, can that we can figure a way to do you know that guy. but but to have guy. but to have that kind of discussion <laughs> and to not be squinting at a number of small screens and hoping that we can get them all sequenced uh, I thought that system worked rather well for communicating with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you Mr. Mack and just to reiterate it's the Learning Partnership Canada and the executive director is Ron Canuel uh, mm -hmm. who has agreed graciously to give us time from his office in Toronto to Mm -hmm. talk about the whole project again right. and um, uh, and um, I, I did forward to you some of their annual report that um, for the fiscal year that ended June 30th uh, we can make sure you have additional information and if we have additional information from them in writing in advance uh, we'll have that distributed to the board by uh, the first first um, Friday of, um, uh, of uh, January when uh, we, as we distribute that agenda for the town so. wonderful thank mm -hmm. you Yes, thank you. Any other future agenda items? Okay, announcements. Just a reminder that with the kind of short compressed holiday, um, we will have uh, uh, the um, uh, individuals who choose to work next week. And I know that uh, because of payroll issues, Sue has informed me that she's uh, of the two days that are not holidays between oh. the two holidays, Sue, Sue will be in at least one day because to make sure that the proper banking takes place um, relating to making sure that um, uh, on the 31st of this month the third payroll of the month is is properly done and uh, but uh, uh, we uh, the offices will be um, uh, pretty well um, those who are choosing not to take vacation uh, are working but uh, we'll have officially the offices closed and we wish everyone a very happy holiday yes. season with your family and um, we look forward to the new year Thank you. All right, I'll need a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purposes of considering the disciplinary data of specific persons 19.851F Wisconsin Statutes A, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health or safety of others and engaged in conduct con constituting repeated refusal or or neglect to obey the rules. 120.131 CE Wisconsin statutes. Is it just one? No. No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. It's right there in front of my And B, review expulsion recommendation from the expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority, which endangered the property, health, or safety of others and engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neg neglect to obey the rules. 120.131 CE Wisconsin statutes. So moved. Second. And we should be reminded that we're going to the IST room that will allow our technician to clear this room and not have to wait uh, to Good. continue. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody.